Some of us, we have an old remedy preaching message. And it works. Lined up with all scripture. Never mind opinion. Never mind philosophy. Never mind ideology. Our interest is to open up your understanding, your mind, and your heart to the intelligence of God that you may refrain Hallelujah. and run from falsehood. Yeah. Now these young men, middle age or whatever, in Jamaica was about to fulfill the wishes of this false prophet. They got videos of him on the news, on YouTube doing the antics of the American false prophets, waving his hand over people and they falling out with his little purple robe on. Throwing his hands over people, they falling out, catching them. They learned this from watching America horror stories. That's what religion is. Religion is America horror stories. And it is horrible when you think of what these men are doing to hard working men and women. That's right. And they come to you in the name of Jesus Christ. A wonderful and horrible thing. Listen in the book of Jeremiah. In Jeremiah chapter 5 and at verse 30. Listen. A wonderful and horrible thing. Two is categories. A wonderful. Hold it. Two categories. Let you know there's two emotions coming as a result of this one act. It's wonderful to some because they're ignorant of the truth of the gospel. So evil is good to them. That's right. A wonderful and horrible and thing. Horrible thing. It's committed in the land. It's taking place in the land. The prophets prophesy falsely. Oh, yes. It doesn't faze these men today to come in the name of the Lord with all these fake prophecies saying the Lord said this, the Lord said that, the Lord said the other. Viewers, viewers, hate me much as you please. You know, you can hate your alarm clock, but you said it. You set that thing for six o'clock and you hate to hear it. That thing ring loud, especially when it got that old kind of ring. That ring like an alarm clock from the 50s and 60s and 70s. It sounded like a fire alarm. You hit that thing and bang on it. It seemed like it just won't stop and throw it across the room. But you said it. You said it to do. What it was made to do. God sends the preacher. Get the old troublemaker. And God sent him. To do. What he sent to do. God made him an alarm. Why the world have fell asleep. And the devil has used false prophets. Through seductive language. To make you comfortable in your sins, comfortable in your ignorance, so you can fall asleep when truth is ringing. Just like you take that alarm clock and throw it across the room, do what you want to it, you still know you got to get up. You can take the word of God and push it aside, do what you want to it. If you ever get into the kingdom of God, you have still got to come back and obey it. That's right. Listen, a wonderful and horrible thing is committed in the land. Took place in the land. The prophets prophesy falsely. Prophets are liars. Yes. And the priests bear and rule the by their means. And the have made themselves rulers by their own means. And my people love to have it so. What kind of person are you? What kind of person? Who love deception. That's true. These religious leaders are so cunning, so crafty, so wicked. That they will... Influence men, yeah. women to murder. That's right. Believe in their doing God's service. In the book of St. John. Now, I, I, I want to show you this in the Bible, Jamaica, the Bible. and the world. That's right. I want the 16th chapter of the book of St. John. And we'll start at verse one. at verse 1. I want everybody to hear this. I want to work on cult leadership and the ignorance yeah. of cult followers. Yeah. When you make your leader the Messiah. Oh, yes. When you make your leader the reincarnation of Christ. That's right. When you make your leader God Almighty Himself. That's right. 
When you make your leader higher than God. Higher. When you bow to him. Pray to him. All the songs in your temple. And your congregation. Is in the name of your leader. Yeah. Are you getting me? Oh yes. There's an organization here in America. It's called House of Prayer. For all the people. Turn me up back there. Give me some more juice. I want a lot of juice. Make it loud. Oh, yes. Make it strong. Oh, yes. Amen. That's, that's your yes. Make it loud. Yes, Glory to God. Make oh, it strong. Yes. The House of Prayer for all the people founded by Bishop C.M. Grace. Right. He was better known as Sweet Daddy Grace. Now, you know that's a false prophet because a man of God don't wear such a title. No. Sweet daddy. <laughs> He's dead now in the Christless grave. He'll soon be ushered to hell. That's right. But while he lived, his hair, he allowed to grow further than his shoulders. He let his nails grow long, two and three inches long until they twist. All the songs that were sung in the house of prayer for all people, they removed all the words that had the name Jesus. And they sung and replaced those words with sweet daddy. You know, I love history. And one day I ran up on one of his videos on YouTube from 1950s. And the choir, oh, he had a good sounding choir. But there's a song that was sung for years. Jesus is mine. And the choir say, oh yes, he's mine. So they switched it. And the whole choir sang it. Sweet daddy is mine. Sweet daddy is mine. Everywhere I go. Everywhere I be. Sweet daddy is mine. See, that's coldism. That's coldism. Only one deserve to be prayed to, sung about, wish up. That's God. That's God. Are you listening? That's right. God is jealous. That's right. Hear the old troublemaker now, because I'm pretty sure, but we, we, we haven't been up here long, and I guarantee, thumbs down already. <laughs> Pointing where they're going. That's right. 20th chapter of the book of Exodus. I say God is jealous. That's right. Human family. That's right. Your bishop. You should never make a song about him. No. He's unworthy. Your bishop. You should never bow before him. I want every Catholic heathen in the world to hear this. You that are watching throughout Rome. That's right. The Pope is not fit to be bowed to. Think of it. He's a man. He got to wash like you. That's right. He had to use soap. He had to brush his teeth or take them out and put them in a jar. That's right. So they can soak overnight. That's right. Amen. Amen. He had to get checkups. He gets sick. Yeah. And he dies. He dies. No man. That's right. Should we ever bow to? No. No man. If you honor that man, let your honor come in compliance with God's eternal word. That's right. Don't sing a song and toss his name in it. I had someone ask me, why don't you change the name uh, of our television program from the truth of God to Pastor Jenna's Ministries? You trying to get me in trouble with God? If I have on their passage in his ministry, we'll be advertising a lie. That's right. Because Jesus said, this doctrine is not mine. That's right. This ministry is not mine. That's right. This thing is of God. Now I say that Jesus Christ was listen, a minister. Listen, listen, In Romans 15 and verse 8. I say that Jesus Christ was a minister. Of the circumcision. Of the circumcision. For, the, for the truth of for God. For the truth of God. For the truth of God. Not for Geno Jenna's ministries. No. 
When these preachers name their ministry after them, you know where the money is going. Right. right to their business. Right to, that's right. Get what I'm telling you now. In the book of Follow e me in the book of Exodus. Exodus chapter 20 and at verse 1. All right. And God spake all these words saying. God spake these words. I am the Lord thy God. Glory to God. I am the Lord thy God. We are. I am the Lord thy Cultism. God. Cultism. That's right. Cults have more than one God. Oh, yes. See, when you got more than one God, or if you got two, you got three, you got four, you got five, you don't represent the God of Israel. No. You see, there's only one true living God after God that made Adam. That's right. The first father. That's right. And that's the God that made Eve the mother of all living. Yeah. That's the God that translated Enoch. And that's the God that talked to Abraham. That's right. And that's the God that delivered Israel out of the hands of Pharaoh. That's right. That's the God that created the universe. That's the God that sitteth upon the circle of the earth, and the inhabitants thereof is all as, as the grasshoppers. That's right. These other gods, plural, fake, yes. phony, weak, dumb, ignorant. That's right. You know, you say your preacher is God Almighty. And then I come along and ask you, well, when was his birthday? <laughs> like in the Nation of Islam says that Master Farad Muhammad, the great Mahdi, was God. Lord. Born 18 something. That's a devil out of hell. That's the devil. God ain't never was born. Before the mountains were brought forth. What? Before. Yeah. Give chapter and verse where I want them to follow me to the letter. Psalms 90, we'll start at verse 1. What is it? Lord, thou hast been our dwelling place in all generations. How many? Lord, thou hast been our dwelling place in all. How many? In all. How many lords? Lord, Get there. Lord. Spell it. L-O-R-D. Lord. How many? One. One. Lord. Lord. Thou hast been our dwelling thou place. Thou hast been. Thou hast been. I let you know you got to dwell in him. Okay. That's right. So where to go? Thou has been. You Thou. got to be in him. That's right. Thou has been our dwelling place. In all generations. In all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth. Uh-oh. Before the mountains was brought forth. For ever thou hadst formed the earth and the world. For you made the earth and the world. Even from everlasting. From eternity. To everlasting. To eternity. Thou art God. From no beginning. To no ending. That's right. You're God. Thou art God. From no beginning to no ending. Yes. You're God. That's right. That's the one. Hallelujah. That's the one we wish up. That's right. Go back to Exodus now. Back in Exodus chapter 20 and verse 1. Follow me. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God. I am the Lord thine God. Which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Yes. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Now hold it. Singular God is talking. Right. And the only time you have a G-O-D-S is when you're trying to set up rival against the G-O-D. That's right. All of God true men. Yeah. We know it's one. That's right. Even the devil know it's one and make you believe it's more than one. That's right. Give me the book of James. Book of James chapter 2 and at verse 19. Let me show you this, viewers. Then we go back to Exodus. Then we go back to John. James chapter 2 and verse 19. Follow me. Thou believest that there is one God. Wait, how, how are we doing? Thou doest well. Oh, all right, all right. I'm all right then. That's right. If you believe there's one God, how you feel? Thou doest well. How are you doing in God eyes? The devil's all here. Yeah. How doest are you well. doing in God eyes? Thou doest well. If you believe in more than one, you ain't doing well. I don't care even if you think so. That's right. If you believe in more than one, that's right. You're not doing well. They criticize me over the internet. Pastor, you didn't preach one God. That's right, I preach one God. And God said, if I believe there's one, what did he say? Thou doest well. I'm doing well, even if you criticize me. God said, I'm doing well. Do now, who do you think I'm going to take? That's right. God says what? Thou believest that there is one God. How are we doing? Thou doest well. Amen. I'm doing all right. Doing all right. Now, you give me Bible. How are you doing 
and the Bible tell me how you're doing, you'd have to believe in more than one. Give That's me a right. Bible tell me how you're doing. That's right. I got Bible how we're doing. That's right. You send me your scripture that tells us how you're doing when you say there's more than one God. Jehovah yes. Witnesses. Mm -hmm. When you make Jesus a God and make Jehovah the God, tell me how you're doing with two. Just send me that scripture. I just want to know how you're doing. That's right. You know, they got three persons in the Godhead. Tell me how you're doing. Making God schizophrenic. That's right. Giving him multi personalities. That's right. Just tell me how you're doing and send me a Bible that said so. <laughs> Listen, thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. What knowledge do the devil have? The devils also believe. And what do they do? And tremble. The devil know which one. That's right. But he make you believe it's three. That's right. Why do he make you believe it's three? Because he's the father of lies and he wants all his children to be liars like him. Like him. Go back to the book of Exodus. Back in Exodus chapter 20 now we're at verse 2. Listen. I am the Lord I thy am the God, Lord, thy God. Which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt out of the house of bondage. Yes. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Don't you have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven Don't image. Don't make unto thee any graven image. Or any likeness of anything that is in heaven That's above. That's another thing that takes place in cultism. They make images of their leader and pay homage to him, right. bow to him, pray to him, make that image sacred. That's right. Until it become a good luck charm. That's right. They put so much confidence in the image. That's right. And every Catholic church, let me educate you. When we bought this campus, you know, folks heard me preach against wealth and all that type of stuff when you get it wrongfully. And somebody got so offended, they say, well, look at that marble podium up there. I bet you paid a lot of money for that. <laughs> we didn't pay nothing for it. <laughs> we ain't paid nothing for it. Yeah. This was not a podium. It was a marble, an Italian, thick, heavy, 1929 hand-carved marble altar that was in the convent. Yeah. And I redesigned it. Wonderful. I got my men together and told them, look at the seams of the entire altar and dismantle it and then number it and bring it to the lower auditorium and lay it on the floor. And I came and looked at each number. They said, just the altar. I said, no, get the marble off the wall too. I'm going to use that. Mm -hmm. Took the marble off the wall. I mean, it, brother, them brothers were struggling with it. It was so heavy. I said, lay it out. And I got my pencil and took the altar to redo it. This piece right here wasn't part of the altar. We took it off the wall. Yeah. Those big squares on the front never was on the altar. They was mounted into a wall. So I took an altar and redesigned it. Yes. So it didn't cause us nothing. <laughs> but in every Catholic church, there are altars. In the altars, there's a little square that's made to come out. In that altar are pieces of a dead person's body mm -hmm. in the form of a bone. My Lord. And the altar in the main auditorium was way bigger than this. They took the altar. They had several bones in it. Mm. They forgot about this one. They thought they could come back and get it and say, no, I say you ain't come back and get nothing. You... <laughs> So when it came time for us to dismantle and I redesigned it for a speaker's podium, they said, uh, I went over there to make sure and I forgot about the little square that was at the top. And I removed it and there it was. Human bone. The Catholics believe that it body parts of dead parishioners who they call saints are sacred. Body part. It can be a finger. It can be a toe. It can be a part of a bone of a human body. My Lord. When we first bought this campus, the first priest of this place was buried on the grounds. Right out there where we designed that wall up there. He was buried in the ground. My Lord. I told him I don't mind buying the church, but the priest don't come with it. <laughs> priest don't come with it. That's right. They wanted to leave him in the ground. I said, no, you don't. 
No, you don't. You're going you're gonna to come get this package and get it out of here. Because if we dig them up, amen. 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 And he broke the bones of the priests. Listen. In the book of 2 Chronicles, chapter 34, and at verse 5. What happened? And he burnt the bones of the priests. He burnt the bones of the priests. Upon their altars. Upon their altars. And cleansed Judah and Jerusalem. That's what the world needs to be cleansed. And they break down the altars break of Baal in his the presence. altars of Baal in his presence. And the images that were on and high the above images them. images that was on high above them. He cut down. That's what we did here when we built this campus. Yeah. We went on imagery killing spree. Yeah. Amen. I looked over there, there were some brothers just kicking images down. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> Tearing them to pieces. That's right. That's right. Why? We had to cleanse the house. Cleanse. That's right. Cleanse it. Cleanse. Purify it. That's Once you right. cleanse it naturally, you got to come back and clean it spiritually. And the groves and the carved images and the, and the molten images. And what? He break in pieces. Break in pieces. And make dust of them. Make dust of them. So... I was in a barber shop, and I found out there was a Daily News sitting there, and on the front page, priests removed from resting place. I'm like, okay, well, and I noticed the address, 5105 North 5th Street. That's how I found out. Wow. They snuck in and grave robbers. <laughs> First. They were defiant and didn't want to do it. But what, they changed their mind. You know why? They remembered that they buried him with the pure, solid, gold, large cross wow. laying on the chest of a corpse. Pure gold. Dug him up and got that gold out of there. I don't know what they done with him, but I'm pretty sure what they done with that gold. Are you getting what I'm telling you? That's right. So we had to get rid of the images. That's right. Demolish them. Yeah. Ain't kidding about what they cost. No. We had to get rid of them. That's right. Whenever you have a coat, images are made not only out of clay, but 99% of the time out of flesh That's right. and blood. That's right. Now let me show you the danger of these men and women who are co-leaders. Yes. 16th chapter of the book of John. In, jo in St. John chapter 16 and we'll start at verse 1. Listen good. These things have I spoken unto you. Jesus preaching to us. That's right. These things I spoke to you. That you should not be offended. Don't you be offended. They shall put you out of the synagogues. Now he began to tell his disciples yeah. what will happen to them. They shall put you out of they the synagogues. They will throw you out of places of worship. Yea, the time cometh. Listen. Yea, the, the time, time come. That whosoever killeth you. Whoever, whoever will kill you. Will think that he doeth God's service. And these whoever things, will kill you, whosoever killeth you, will think will think that he doeth God's service. They will believe they're doing the will of God. And these things will they do unto you. They gonna do it unto you because they have not known the Father nor me. Because they don't know the Spirit nor the flesh that the Spirit was in. That's right. They don't know God That's and right. they don't know the Son of God. They shall put you on it. That's right. Given his apostles warning. warning. How you going to be murdered. And when they murder you. The murderers going to believe it's God's will. That's right. Well that also have transitioned. Over to them. That use the name of Jesus Christ. In vain. That's right. 